back. I don't know if I should thank Anne or not for letting me follow my dear friend Sue Black. I don't know where, how and where you top that. Um, and while I have been thinking about my remarks for a year, the reason I'm standing at a podium and I have note cards, just to scare Anne again, I, I didn't know what I was going to say until yesterday. And so before I explain all of that, I'm going to digress. Um, as Canadian Prime Minister has been here, uh, and as a Canadian, um, I, I'm one of those one in ten Canadians who gets to claim Irish ancestry. So there's some Irish and a little storytelling, so that's why I'm going to let you let me digress. Um, so I did write a book on networking, and my career has been transformed and is only explained by networking. But what I want to do is talk to you first about Snoop Dogg. Because why not? Uh, and before we do, I just need to know, and it's hard with these lights, so please shout, is there anyone in the room who is visually impaired? Okay, thank you. So with that, we're going to play a little video. So let's talk about Snoop Dogg and New Orleans uh, Jazz Festival being upstaged by a sign language interpreter. This is someone who is, in my mind, a master communicator, mastering the art of connecting and, dare I say, networking. So Holly, who has worked with artists in addition to Snoop Dogg, she studies the artist before she's been hired by a festival because there are deaf patrons who are attending the concert. So she studies the artist, she studies their life, she studies each song she thinks about how words convey multiple meaning, meanings. She focuses on body language. And as I mentioned, she's, a, she's an American Sign Language um, interpreter. And we can think, oh, there's American Sign Language. Guess what? There's local dialects and usage. So she studies the local dialect and usage of where she is going to be performing and what does that all translate into? Snoop Dogg had about a 50, 55 minute set at the New Orleans Jazz Festival. Holly prepared for 50 to 60 hours. She was not looking, you know, to create a viral video. She has one focus, and that's connecting with her audience, the deaf patron. How can the deaf patron enjoy the show? And to deliver on that promise, she's got to develop empathy, which means committing the time to how she's going to communicate most effectively and connect with them. So success for her, as I said, is not that viral video. It's connecting with her specific audience. And for her, her mission, that connection, is accomplished, as she says, when the deaf patrons are dropping to the beat. So you're thinking to yourself, that's great, Kelly. We've got a great video. We've got Snoop, super. What does this have to do with a festival focused on technology? And maybe more importantly, a section of this Tech Festival on Technology, which is about transforming you. I want you to transform how you're connecting and communicating and how you're thinking about it. So since we're at a tech festival, let's talk a little tech for a second. 
told you I was from Irish blood. It's coming out, isn't it? The storyteller. I'm like all over the place. And you're like, oh, Lord, is she Irish, if there was any question. The two Celtic dames didn't give it away. There it is. So AI, chatbots, conversational interfaces. Those are predicted to be a $600 billion market by 2020. And I bet the startups in the room, you'd likely have decks, you're gonna be so excited, Sharon Vosmek and Asti are here, and you're gonna be you know, looking for those investors, and you're gonna be pitching them, and you're, you've got your deck, and it's all like set out, and you'd likely have it filled with references to big data, machine learning, how will that information, how that information and your product, your service, your tech-enabled company, how it's disrupting and how it's going to improve or transform the customer experience. Look around this room. We may all be users of technology, we may be startups, we may be founders who are creating technology, but we're also consumers. And what are we demanding? We're demanding personalization. We're demanding customization. Don't serve me up some mobile ad that, you know, is for a product or service I'm not going to use. No me. So what are you doing to deliver the same customer service in your personal relationships? If the machines are learning human characteristics, ask yourself, what are we teaching them? All of our bad habits? We're the teachers of technology, and we aren't using the data and the tools to elevate our own relationships and to connect better. It's a connected economy, global, local, online, offline. It's a connected economy. And at this point in time, we can focus on the technology or we can take a step back and say, it's the people behind it. It's the relationships that are important and matter more than ever before in this hyper-connected world that we live in. So I got a quote, and I, I was kicking myself yesterday, but it's a really good quote, and I'm sorry because people who know me, and sorry to the men in the room, because I, you know, I do love you dearly, but for me to stand up here and quote a straight white guy is really disappointing to me. Really, really, really disappointing. But Jeffrey Hazlett made, had a quote, and it was to a bunch of chief marketing officers of major corporations. So I want you to you know, keep that context in mind. And he says, relationships matter, and we have forgotten that intimacy can exist in a digital environment through data, responses, and personalization. Relationships matter. So my frustration and reason why I wrote the book Build Your Dream Network was so much advice on networking, which for me is, is the most intimate activity of building human relationships. My frustration was the lack of personalization. Generic advice, one size fits all. Sounds like a mobile ad someone served up to you five years ago, doesn't it? And that advice, you know, generic advice on networking, is contrary to the tech and economic trends that are being forecasted based on what? Us, our activity. What we're demanding is individuals as human beings, as people creating and living in this new connected era. So your goal when networking is to be heard. There is not a one-size-fits-all approach, just like there's not one American Sign Language for every single community. You are unique, as is your audience. So let's go back to Holly and where I started. I told you she spends 50 
to 60 hours preparing for a 50 to 60 minute performance. Ask yourself, how much time are you spending building trust, delivering value, because you've listened and you've observed, and dare I say it, you've checked the data. So I want you to, and with respect to networking and connecting, I want you to transform how and where you think about networking. I want you to stop worrying about how you're gonna work the room. I want you to start worrying about how am I gonna connect? How am I developing human skills? Just like the machines, you need to develop your human skills. And I want you to start thinking about it that way. For those from the, who are at the Bank of Ireland event or the Accenture event, I'm gonna say it again and you've heard me say this before. Networking for me is every single human interaction. It was your decision to be here in Dublin at Inspire Fest. Some of you may be using the hashtag and tweeting. That's networking. Your voicemail, your business card, your headshot, who you stood next to. Every single human interaction is networking. Transform how you think about networking and transform how in that process, how you're connecting to other people. So I started with notes, as I said, because, you know, why not at a tech conference come on stage with index cards? Because that would be really technologically advanced. And I said I'd tell you why I didn't think about my remarks until yesterday. Um, I wanted it to be customized and personalized and relevant for this stage and for this audience. And hopefully, I've been able to do that. So on that note, transform your networking. I look forward to connecting with all of you here at InspireFest, and thank you for having me back.